In this guide, I'll walk you through the steps for creating a frequency distribution. For an example, we'll use the data in the Try It Yourself on pages 40 and 41 of the elementary statistics text used for Math 221. If you take a look at this data set, you'll see that we're looking at the ages of the top 50 richest people recorded in the year 2009. Those ages range from, range from age 35 to 89. In our problem, we're told to use eight classes when we construct our frequency distribution. So when we construct that frequency distribution, we're going to calculate the class width for each class. And in order to calculate a class width, we use a specific formula. The class width is found by using the range. We divide the range by the number of classes that we want to have. Recall that the range for any set of data is just the difference between the largest data in your data set and the smallest. So the range for our data, in this case, can easily be found by subtracting 89 minus 35. And our range here is going to be 54. So in order to determine how many classes we should have or how wide our classes should be for each of our eight classes, we would take 54 and divide by 8. That does not come out evenly, but comes out as 6.75. So in this case, we round up to 7. So our class width should be 7. The class width of 7 tells us that each class will span 7 values. So what does that mean? That means that each class could contain 7 values. Now, that doesn't mean that it can only have 7 values be put into it, but what it means is that it could be satisfied by 7 values. So I'm saying that if I start my class width at the number 35, then the number 35 could be in that class, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 values. So my first class goes from 35 to 41. So that's my first class. 35 to 41. Now we can't have any gaps in our classes, so our next class has to start immediately and go from 42, and it has to span seven numbers, so it's going to go from 42 to 48. So if you were to count up 42, 43, 44, 45, keep going up seven numbers, you would go up to 48. And the next class would start again immediately at the next number at 49 and go to 55. And you would continue on that way, filling all eight classes. And you would have 35 to 41, 42 to 48, 49 to 55, and 56 to 62, and so on until you got up to 84 to 90. Realizing that you're not going to be counting out, out your span of seven numbers for each class, take a look at the lower class limit of each class and see what you have. If you look at 49 to 42, notice what you have if you subtract those numbers. 49 minus 42. That equals 7. Likewise, if you subtract 69 or 63 minus 56, you also have 7. The distance from between each lower class limit equals 7. So you can get from one class to the next by just adding 7 to each lower class limit. And that will help you form your classes as you move along. The next step in forming your frequency distribution is to add up your frequencies or tally up where your data falls out of your data set. And that's as simple as just reading your data chart. 
So you look up in your data set and you just keep track of where your data falls. So I look at the first number, 35, and I write down a tally mark where it falls. So 35, which class is it going to fall in? It's going to fall right there. 36, I have another one here. 42, I have one here. 43, I have one here. 44, I have one here. And I just keep going and I count up where everything falls until I'm done tallying up all of my data and keeping track of where everything was recorded. Once I'm done, I will have totaled up all of these data pieces and I'll know which class holds how many pieces of the data. If you total up each of the frequencies, you will find that they should all total up to the number of pieces of data that you have in your data set. That's always a great way to check to make sure that you did catch each one of the pieces of data in your data set. That way, if you didn't come up with the right number, you'll know that you didn't count for each one of the pieces in your data set. Our next column of interest is the midpoint column. This column essentially just tells us the middle of each class and is found from the formula of the lower class limit plus the upper class limit divided by two. So essentially it's just the average of the two limits of the class. Taking a look at each one of our classes, let's find the midpoint for each class. For the first class, I want the midpoint of 35 to 41. So I take 35 plus 41 and divide by 2. 35 plus 41 divided by 2 is 76 over 2. So the midpoint of the first class is 38. The next class, 42 plus 48 divided by 2 90 over 2. The midpoint of the second class is 45. And you continue on in the same way to find the midpoint of each subsequent class. As you progress through those classes you should find that the midpoints are 38 45, 52, 59, 66, 73, 80, and 87. The next column is the relative frequency column. This column tells us what portion of the data fell into the class. This is your percentage column. The relative frequency is found by taking the frequency of pieces of data that fell into each class and dividing that by the sample size. So it, it's the portion. It's what portion did of that frequency out of the whole frequency was in the class. So for the first class we had two of the pieces of data that fell in that class. So what percentage is two out of fifty? It's a simple mathematical calculation. So grab your calculators and calculate what percentage 2 is out of 50. 2 divided by 50 gives us what percent? 2 over 50 is 0 0.04. So that's your relative frequency, 0 0.04. For the next class, 5 out of 50 equals 0 0.10. So there's your relative frequency for that. Your next class, 7 out of 50. Same procedure all the way down equals 0 0.14. And the next one I don't need to write out again because it's the same thing. And you continue on in the same way. And there are your relative frequencies. Now just like with your frequencies, they all totaled up to 50. Relative frequencies also have a sum that you should get. Whenever you have a portion, you should have 
a whole. When we're talking about relative frequency, we should total up to 100%. If in your calculator you took each one of these relative frequencies and entered them in, you should total up to 100%. That is how you will know that you did your calculations correctly. If we added all these up, I know that they would add up to 1. And if I multiplied that times 100, I would have 100%. Our last column is the cumulative frequency column. This column lets us quickly see the number of data that fell above or below a certain point or class. The cumulative frequency is basically a running total of all the frequencies. This is probably the easiest one to calculate. Not that any of the others were hard, but this one is really pretty simple. We just total up the frequencies and just keep them going. So for the first class, our frequency was 2. For the next frequency, cumulative frequency, we add 2 to 5. So it's 2 plus 5 gives us 7. The next frequency is 7 plus 7. It's a running total. And we just keep adding this fre the frequency you just got to the next frequency. So our next running total would be 14 plus 7 gives us 21. And from there we add 21 to 10 and get 31. And you continue on until you've totaled up all of your frequencies. Now again, with the cumulative frequency, there's a great little check at the end. Your final number should equal 50. You should total up to the number of data you have in your original set. If you don't, then you've done something wrong. So that's a great way to check that you've done everything correctly. Your final cumulative frequency value should be the same as the number of data pieces you have in your set. So what does this cumulative frequency tell me? This tells me, let's say, I look right here in this row. This tells me that 31 people were in the 63 to 69 class, so 31 or, few pe 31 or fewer were in that class. So it's a really quick way for me to look and see how many people were above or below that class. So here's what it looks like when you put it all back together. You have your frequency, your midpoint, your relative frequency, and your cumulative frequency. Your data is now organized and ready to generate a histogram or chart or whatever else you need to do with it. Let me know if you have any questions.